renovating up to 12 homes, restoring entire streets, revitalizing two communities, building better neighborhoods. News Channel 5 and Greater Cleveland Habitat for Humanity, working together to strengthen our communities. Go to Newsnet5.com to see how you can help improve the place we all call home. Restoring neighborhoods, improving lives, empowering communities. Five on your side, building better neighborhoods. Well, that's absolutely correct. This house is ready to go. It's ready to be occupied right here on Colfax Road. Habitat for Humanity holding its open house to the public tomorrow, Saturday, August 31st from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. As a matter of fact, Habitat is renovating simultaneously seven homes here on Colfax Road and News Channel 5's Building Better Neighborhoods has been following the progress here every step of the way. The National Council of Jewish Women playing a big role in resurrecting this home. As a matter of fact, get this, they went ahead and furnished and decorated this house for less than $1,000. Can you believe it? It is possible, and I'll show you how you can do that through its Thriftique store coming up on News Channel 5 at 6 o'clock. For now, live on 5 from Cleveland's East Side, I'm troubleshooter Joe Paganakis. Volunteers are giving back to a man who served his country. News Channel 5 is committed to highlighting stories about building better neighborhoods. Anchor Chris Lanigan joins us with them with more. Well, Danita, 67 year old Enrico Galassi is a veteran. He served in both the Army and Navy and traveled all over the world for it. Now his home has fallen into disrepair. Galassi and his wife have lived in this 67 year old Slavic village home for 15 years, along with three generations of his family. But the good news for him, the group Rebuilding Cleveland Together partnered with the Slavic Village Development Corporation to improve the neighborhood, which was once considered the center of the foreclosure crisis. Today, volunteers from several corporations got together to completely renovate his Fleet Avenue home. They picked up drills, hammers, and paintbrushes to repair the front and rear porches, add new paint to the walls, fix the gutters, and spruce up the front and backyards. The list grew too long for Glassy to keep up with, and he says he can't believe all the help he's received. It's heartwarming. It's super nice. It's it's flabbergasting to tell you the truth. I'm flabbergasted. I'm amazed. And I thank God Almighty. That is great to see. And the volunteers will be out there again working tomorrow. Live on five in the newsroom. I'm Chris Flanagan. People are so apathetic around this neighborhood that nobody really wants to take the initiative to start doing something. Cleveland business owner Mark Bush says volunteers must mobilize to eliminate the graffiti that has attacked businesses and homes. Today, Hands On Northeast Ohio provided the proper prescription, coordinating volunteers with News Channel 5 and Slavic Village Development painting over the problems. We hope to be that pathway for people to easily get involved while building capacity for nonprofit schools, municipal entities, and block clubs and individuals and people in the trenches doing the hard work every single day. Volunteer results that can be reproduced in any neighborhood. I'm really happy to see this happening here because it's going to take away one of the negatives of this corner. On your side, I'm troubleshooter Joe Paganakis. It's a News Channel 5 mission to restore neighborhoods, improve lives, and help you take action in your community. Five on your side, building better neighborhoods. We're now a destination place. It's just going to explode. People are always out. It's fun. In our continuing effort to build better neighborhoods, tonight we take a look at three comeback communities, areas of cities where time and money have been invested to draw people back in. You might say the lights have been turned back on in these communities, making them destination locations. If you haven't been to Kent, Willoughby, or Cleveland's Flats, what's happening in these areas will surprise you. News Channel 5's Chris Flanagan, Danita Harris, and Leon Bibb join me tonight to show you the rebirth. First, let's take a look at Kent. Thanks, Joe. Kent is known as the Tree City. It's the largest city here in Portage County. Now, if you haven't been to Kent lately, or perhaps you went to Kent State and haven't been back in a long time, well, you won't believe the transformation that's taking place in the downtown area. They're singing the blues in Kent. I believe, I believe. I believe my time has come. And that's a sweet tune. A lot of people are now kind of rediscovering it. And then now even the naysayers have to now kind of like, this is pretty neat. Gwen Rosenberg owns Popped, a popcorn store in the heart of the three-block redevelopment called Acorn Alley. 
The area is bursting with restaurants and small businesses. I mean, I get people in all the time. They lived in Kent 20 years and they hadn't been downtown in 20 years. And they're coming in and checking it out and it's beautiful. Like Acorn Alley, the Kent State University Hotel and Conference Center, which just opened in June, is another jewel. It sits directly across the street from the Transit Center, a sparkling 350 space parking garage. The massive makeover is five years in the making at a cost of $110 million, money many say is well spent. It was pretty dingy and just, you know, getting a little run down and with all this, this new building, it's, I think it's really given it a total rebirth. The city says the rebirth created nearly 1,000 construction jobs in the past four years and projects 700 permanent new jobs downtown. We were dying on the vine rapidly and we couldn't get any good businesses in town and now we have very little space, if any, available. For the first time, Kent State University's main campus is connected directly to downtown by a sidewalk called the Esplanade. It represents an actual pathway uh, that gets you there. You just say follow the Esplanade and the Esplanade takes you downtown. A downtown that's attracting people from all over. As they say, we're now a destination place. A woman called my office. She wanted to know if the parking deck was open. She was coming down for a concert and they, sorry to say, live in Cleveland and are talking about moving to Kent. Because Kent is open for business and appears to be hitting all the right notes. And joining me now is Kent Mayor Jerry Fiala. Mayor, great to see you. This is incredible. How proud are you of what, what's transpired here? I, I am very proud. I'm a homegrown boy. What we've done here is that uh, we're, we've got a rebirth of our downtown. And consequently, uh, like every town in northern Ohio, uh, they're kind of losing their way. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've done that. We, we came from a railroad town to uh, a business town, industrial town, and that kind of phased out and died down. And we realized we had to do something. Two years ago, this was all flat land, vacant buildings, nothing. Uh, now, two years later, we have, consequently, we have uh, ongoing businesses, they're adding to the tax base, which uh, helps us pay for our public services to the re res residents in the city of Kent. Uh, it, it's, it's just delightful. Hey, Mayor, what message does this send, not only to here in Kent, but really the surrounding community and all of Northeast Ohio? I, th I think the message I have, and I want to get out there, if, if, if you think positive and you have a good group of people that have the same idea, they want something to happen, and not dwell on negativity, you can do it. We're an entertainment district, we're a destination waiting to happen for everybody. The knock has been, there's been disconnect between the university and the downtown of the city. Talk about this rebirth and, and how you hope that gap is now the, narrowing. Now you have one community. Yeah, the May 4th thing is over with. It's, it's part of our history. We, it was a bad time for everybody. We lived through it, but I think everybody recognizes there's only one way to go and that's put it behind us. But right now, the university and the town are, are closer together than they ever were. They're working positively together. Where do you see Kent 10 years, 15, 25, 50 years down the road? Well, I want to see more Kent develop. I mean, even though we, we built this new area, it isn't actually our center of Kent. Our center downtown is actually one block over. And what I want to see us to, to rede not redevelop, but flourish that so it, it all blends in. So it, it's just one big neighborhood. As mayor, you must tickle yourself, uh, be tickled at times, and you look around and you see what, what you've been able to accomplish over the last few years. Well, it, it, it just wasn't me as mayor, it was the team. And I, I, I will not take credit as one person. It was a team, it was a university, it was the city, and it, it was part and it was the, the three developers, the Pizzuti Group, the Ron Burbick Group, and the Fairmont Group. How important was this to happen here for Kent? I think it was important, I think it was time for it to happen. Uh, and it took us 30 years to get here because it took some, it took some tries to do this and it, whether it was the stars aligned all at one time or, or whatever happened. And, and I'm proud it did happen because this is what we got today. It's great to see you. Mayor, thank you very much and congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Nice yeah, seeing you in person. Is, you, this is great. Right, thank you. You know, you know it's, 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 it's true. You look slimmer in person than you can do on TV. Oh, I'm sucking it in. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, <laughs> Mayor, thank you. All right. Well, this, this is terrific. If you haven't been down in Kent in a while or maybe you went to school and haven't been back in a long time, come on down. I'm sure they'd love to have you here. The uh, revitalization, the rebirth here is terrific. Joe? 
Thanks a lot, Chris. A lot happening in Kent. Another community that's transforming itself is Willoughby. And also now, Cleveland's East Bank of the Flats is also staging a comeback. We'll visit both as Building Better Neighborhoods Comeback Communities continues. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe my time has come. You're bringing in people, you can see it. A combination of young and old, and that's what we need to have. It's wonderful to see all these people walking around. This is what summer's about, though, downtown. We love Willoughby. I love it. Uh, I grew up here. When I was in high school, it was all antique stores and kind of nothing to do. Now there's restaurants everywhere, people are always out. It's fun. All the way come down to the good food and the ambiance. It's just quaint and nice and comfortable. Welcome back. I'm here in the city of Willoughby, a city whose downtown is on the National Register of Historic Places. It's one of our comeback communities. So what makes Willoughby the place to be? Take a look. Restaurants. Cool sounds. Bright colored flowers. And people who know how to relax and have a good time. It's all in the place known as the Courtesy City. Welcome to Willoughby. Its downtown is bustling with businesses like Al's Barbershop. Owner Les Jones has stayed here for 15 years because when it comes to quality living, Willoughby makes the cut. It's a very friendly town. Uh, there's a lot of traffic, uh, uh, a lot of bars and restaurants, so people are coming down for, it's like a destination for entertainment. But uh, the shop's been here since 1950, so it's, it's just a great place to be. And a must stop for ribs or a juicy burger is the very popular Burgers and Beer restaurant, a great place to take the family, whether you like to eat indoors or out. Willoughby is a town that uh, has been revitalized and it has come back as a friendly neighborhood town that welcomes families of all sizes. This quaint city with a small town feel attracts people from all over Northeast Ohio and they all come for the same reason. We come to these concerts, we go to the restaurants, um, they have an art fest every year and the antique stores and it's just nice to walk around. There's everything you need in this city. Shopping, movies, bars, restaurants, music, just a nice place to go to. From hair salons, to coffee shops, golfing, jogging, or skateboarding down the sidewalk. This city of over 22,000 people puts a twist on small town living. But when one talks about the revitalization of Willoughby and the energy behind it, you can only point to one source, the people. It's community, it's small town, even though we're close to Cleveland, 20 minutes downtown, I used to work downtown, and. It's just a nice place to, to live. Some people go off to Florida and no, I have my roots here and it feels really good to just go in the store and people know you and that kind of thing. You can come downtown here any night of the week and you'll find the city, the, the, the main street all lit up and people sitting out. To, uh, uh, coffee houses and it's just, you know, every, it just, it, the, the place is alive. Joining me now is Mayor David Anderson. He was elected mayor of Willoughby back in 1991, now in his 21st year as mayor. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes over the past two decades. And I want to know about the revitalization of Willoughby because it wasn't just a political platform for you. It was a personal plan as well. Oh, it was. Uh, I've grown up in, in Lake County my whole life, lived in Willoughby for uh, 25 years before I ran for mayor. And uh, that downtown was always so special for us. but. Uh, 20 years ago, it had fallen into considerable disrepair, and it had been at uh, uh, there's about 40 percent vacancy on the main ground floors, and a lot of the buildings were in dis disrepair. And I guess what we tried to bring to it uh, from City Hall is uh, just some energy, because it, I've always told people when people come to you with an exciting idea, if you just get excited with them a little bit, it's amazing what they go out and do. They borrow money, they revitalize buildings, they hire people, they start businesses. And, and uh, if, if I've got to say what the reason for the revitalization was, it's the people that we have here in Willoughby and the, the faith that they had in this community and the love that they had for this community. 
Well, it's very obvious that Willoughby is a, like a destination place for the weekend with so many activities, the concerts that are happening here, uh, the art fest. What are some of the other things that you see that are a part of people wanting to come to Willoughby? Well, the, the great businesses that we have downtown, and uh, most people know of our restaurants, but there's so many other great businesses that are selling things from crepes to cupcakes to uh, wedding cakes to photography to uh, it's a great place to come and get your hair done and, and, and that type of thing so it really is a very vital downtown but Willoughby as a whole uh, that the downtown is a very small part it's, but it's the face of our community but by and large Willoughby as a whole um, we're a pretty diverse little community and yet we think of ourselves as a small town that's the mentality that we kind of carry here. We always talk about the town of Willoughby and, and as you'll see with the concert that's, that's going on uh, and that type of thing. This is one of the small town things that, uh, that people could have been enjoying 50 years ago at this same spot and we still do those types of things today. One of the things I have to highlight is your active seniors. Uh, oh, yes. The seniors are so active in Willoughby with the various activities that they have going on. We've got a tremendous senior center, and uh, our director, Carolyn Moore, has done such a marvelous job. And, uh, uh, but again, it's the people that do that, because uh, uh, the majority of people that are at the Willoughby Senior Center don't live in Willoughby. And that's something that's interesting for a lot of folks. They live in other communities around, but they come to Willoughby because of the great uh, activities. And they are. It's a great group of seniors. Right. Well, thank you so much, Mayor Anderson, for talking to us today. There you have it, Willoughby, definitely a comeback community. And I think I can speak for the mayor and say you are invited to stop by anytime to check it out for yourself. Joe? Thanks a lot, Danita. And so there you have two comeback communities, Willoughby and Kent, where people are just waiting to welcome you. Now, coming up, we'll take you to Cleveland's East Bank of the Flats. If you haven't been to the Flats in a while, this is one place that you have to see. I think it's up and coming, a lot of younger people. I think they're doing a lot of good things. I think there's a lot of potential here. I grew up when the flats were the flats, and it's great to see life back. It's coming back, and there are options, and people are going to start spending money here, and I'm going to keep telling my friends from out of town they ought to get and come get a job here in Cleveland. Now we've shown you how Ken and Willoughby have revived their downtown areas, bringing in new businesses and restaurants and giving people a reason to visit. Next up, Cleveland's Flats. Remembering the Flats in its heyday, the 80s and the 90s. The Flats were an entertainment mecca, but the vibrancy didn't last long. But now, local developer Scott Woolstein wants to return the Flats into a happening place again. And as Leon Bibb found out, he's well on his way. That's right, Joe. Phase one of the East Bake Project is complete. Phase two is underway. Let me show you what's been accomplished and what's to come. Ding, ding, ding with the bell. The Greater Cleveland RTA Rapid Transit Waterfront Line clangs through the east bank of the Cleveland Flats, especially significant, announcing the Flats is back on track. The Cuyahoga River's east bank over the years has seen ups and downs and now back ups again. Muscling upward is the towering professional services firm, Ernst & Young. In its shadow is the new Ken Stewart's East Bank restaurant, where Ernst & Young's managing partner talked about his company's venture into phase one on the Flats Comeback. If you can connect up the lake, the river, and the city, we want to be part of that. That's what this office building does. Echoing the thought is Ken Stewart, owner of Ken Stewart's East Bank restaurant. He is confident the new flats will draw paying customers. I think it's going to be the epicenter of all the activity in Cleveland. It's new, it's fresh, it's got young ideas. Another flats anchor is the Aloft Hotel, marking a flats out of towners destination. All these are beacons reviving an area which several years ago closed shop. The new businesses sport a pioneer spirit where others will follow to also carve out spaces in a profitable new land. Among pioneers are Wileyville restaurant owners Chris and Christy DeLisi. The vision of Scott Wolstein and, and the Fairmont properties, they really kind of hit it out of the park for us. You know, they sold us on this area. It might take two, three, four, five years, but I think in that time frame, I think it's just going to explode. But you're one of those pioneers. Yes. And you're going to the promised land. Correct. Baldwin Correct. Wallace University political science professor Dr. Tom Sutton, who teaches about the flats and its role in Cleveland, is optimistic. 
Now the anchors with Ernst & Young and some of the other development that's planned for the future is there, and I think that's going to create the stability and the crowds and the mix of crowds that you're really going to need to make this thrive. Perhaps symbolically, the RTA Rapid Transit Waterfront Line overpowered our words. That bell ringing means a rapid transit's coming right over your shoulder. Yes. What's that say if a rapid transit is coming into the flats? That means the flats is back. Joining me right now is Harley Cohen, and we're going to talk about what's going on here on the east bank of the Cleveland Flats. Good to see you, Har Harley. Hi, Leon. Tell me, tell me, you, you, you've committed to restaurants and, and, and the hotel here and, and, and a lot of other things. What did it take to get this ball rolling? Well, obviously, uh, the the big uh, the big start uh, comes with uh, somebody with somebody with a vision, uh, the type of vision that the Wallsteins had, and uh, that Fairmount Properties has. And once you begin with that, um, you then follow up with a lot of hard work. What is it about the flats that makes it so prime? Well, there are two things. One is the physical location. The physical location is important because it's, you know, the obvious culmination of the, uh, uh, where the river and the lake meet. But deeper and more importantly than that, the flats represents uh, something in every Clevelander. They, they love the idea of the flats. They love the concept it represents a, a winning attitude. Look into your crystal ball now. We are talking about phase two, which is going to be right out there in that in that green spot, all the way over to the river and up up, up toward the lake. Tell me what you envision for phase two. It's the last piece that gets you right up to the to the water, and it includes um, an entire district. It's not just a piece of the city. It's a part of the city where you can live, you can work, you can play, people will come to. Uh, it will be an entertainment district, it'll be a family district, it'll be a district for young people. Um, it, it really is a, a neighborhood. The green space right there is, the, is going to be the home for a uh, seven-story, uh, uh, 250 resident uh, uh, neighborhood which includes restaurants, uh, entertainment, great views of the river and the lake, and, uh, uh, and an underground parking garage. And this is really the centerpiece of the, of the neighborhood. How has been the, uh, uh, the political side of all of this? City Hall, county government, how have, have they played the role they needed to play for this to happen? The city of Cleveland and the county and the state have gone to great lengths uh, to support this project in every possible way. And, and I think it's for several reasons. I think, I think everybody knows that this is what we, we all want. And I think they're doing everything they can to help us uh, because they want it. Now when you build this, this is long range stuff. I mean, we've gone through flats development before and then the flats kind of rolled over and died. What makes this one phase one and phase two the real thing? Well, you know, that's the question I was hoping you would ask because, um, you know, uh, Ernst & Young, I mean, they don't, uh, they don't move uh, for no reason. You know, they were in their last space, I think, for 80 years. So um, when you come, them moving here, Tucker Ellis moving here is a statement. It says, we're here for a long time. And we expect the developer to develop this property in such a way that supports that commitment. Thank you, Harley Cohen. Appreciate you talking with us. You know, this is really a good example of a rebirth of an area and how things can turn around and become much more vibrant. Joe, back to you. Thanks a lot, Leon. Wow, a lot happening there. Three comeback communities. You know, there's plenty that you can do yourself to build a better neighborhood. All of us at News Channel 5 are committed to doing just that, and here are the numerous projects that we've been working on so far this year.
It was a cold February day when we teamed up to help Habitat for Humanity of Summit County to deconstruct a condemned home in Akron. The home literally taken apart with some of the salvaged items, then being resold in the Habitat's restore. A lot of this stuff, if it wasn't being recycled, resold to help more families, it would be end up in a landfill. So that's not doing anybody any good. So it's been, it's very rewarding. Salvage cabinets, doors, windows, sinks, it all ends up at Habitat's restore on Romick Road. They've also got used couches, chairs, and light fixtures. If I were to go to Home Depot, it would probably cost me at least twice that. I'd say at least eight, nine hundred dollars. Then in April, we grabbed paintbrushes and again teamed up with Habitat, this time the Greater Cleveland Habitat for Humanity. Twelve homes will be renovated in two different Cleveland neighborhoods for families. We help to get houses in shape on Colfax Avenue. We can do basically three rehabs for the same cost of which we were doing one house before. Starting to make progress, brother. No problem, mate. That's what we found. In May, some 200 volunteers organized by the local Yaks kayak instructors helped to clean up the Black River in Lorraine. <laughs> volunteers walked the banks and paddled the river picking up trash. We got a lot of, a lot of bottles, like uh, milk bottles. I got a baby bottle that actually had milk in it. A lot of, uh, I had a bottle of uh, some type of rum that actually had rum still in it. We've got 12 different plots. On a beautiful sunny day in June, we teamed up with Petiti Garden Centers to help plant a garden at the Parma Area Family Collaborative. Tomatoes, potatoes, cucumbers, and more. Once the food is ready for harvest, it will go into the Collaborative's food pantry. A lot of this produce will be going to help families stretch their food budget. And just this month, we were back working with Habitat. We helped dedicate the home we worked on in April for a mother and her two daughters. And we also cleaned out the house next door, which will now be totally rehabbed for another deserving family. And don't forget that you can get involved with building better neighborhoods as well where you live. You can check out our volunteer toolkit posted right now on Newsnet5.com. Here's what you do. Go to the About tab on our main page toolbar. There you'll see BBN in the drop down. That takes you to the BBN page where you click on the volunteer toolkit on the right side of the screen. Here you'll find pages of information on how to volunteer in your neighborhood, plus how to organize and create neighborhood communities. It will also help you establish key contacts and resources to find solutions to problems where you live. So thanks for joining Danita, Chris, Leon, and me for Building Better Neighborhoods Comeback Communities. You can make a difference in your neighborhood. And remember, News Channel 5 is on your side. Have a good night, everybody.